What's good YouTube, Neon Excess here in the flesh, uh, so to speak. Right, um, now Dark Magician 84 has basically said, is there going to be a recap of my round 6? And I thought I might as well do a video about it, as long as some afterthoughts about the WCQ. And I'll also include a deck profile of the de deck build that I took to uh, the WCQ in Ramsgate. And, yeah, so, basically I'm going to talk about my matchups. So... Get my paperwork together. Um, round one, as I said, I went against Adam Hamster. Uh, Hammond. <laughs> Rather. Basically, I lost hands down. I had no good summonable monsters. I started out with a Thunder King and not a lot else. I think I had a Max C, an MST, and uh, a few other little bits, but. Nothing too great, and he dark hold my Thunder King, which was kind of annoying. Otherwise, I might have been able to do something, unless obviously he had Heliotrope, which would have been 50 damage, but you know. And then game two, um, like I said, I made the Lee joke, and he made first turn on the rock. Took my Lee joke, smacked me for 21, was not good, uh, and I just wasn't drawing monsters. I seem to have a lot of speed issues with the deck, it seemed, on the day of the WCQ anyway. Uh, that was Evil Swarms I went against. Uh, game, uh, round two rather, uh, I went against Batman Boxers, a guy called uh, Michael Lillis. Um, I beat him game, uh, beat him round one. Uh, he got me down to 2100 life points. It was a mirror match, Batman Boxers versus Batman Boxers. He's running counter punches and rank up magic, so a much more traditional build of um, Battle boxes. Mine was a little bit off the wall, trying to mess around with the build, trying to really kind of tweak it and make it my own deck. But he got me down to 21, and I got into 38, and then after that 38, I um, beat his ass. The reason why he got me down to 21 is because of Utopia Ray V, the thing that's like an honest during the battle phase and negates monster effects. So he went into Utopia, Utopia went. And then play Rain Cut Magic, Baron's Force. Went into Topia Ray V. And negated my Lee Jokes effect and ran it over. Not only did I take the damage difference of 22 to 25, or 26, whatever it's on. I also took Lee Jokes attack points as damage as well, because it's an honest as well. Which was really annoying. So that's why I went down to 21. Um, and then game two, um, he... We got down into time. I got him down onto 23 with Cowboy uh, towards the end of the match. And he got me down to 900 life points. Once again, using things like Utopia Ray V and things like that, it wasn't too great. It was a very messy grind game. Um, I had recently attacked into a Fossil Diner, which boosted both his lead jokes up to 3,000. I was stalling behind a crazy box. And he played... A spell that took my crazy box's materials, attached it to his Lee joke and things like that. So it was a very messy game. And in time, he had higher life points, so he won game two. But because I won game one, it was called a draw. So I got one point for that. It was basically zero points for a lose, one point for a win. And at, at zero points for a lose, one point for a draw, three points for a win. So that was my round two against Batman Boxers. By which point I started thinking, you know, if I'm... If I've got nothing for this mirror match, that's kind of bad. Um, and I couldn't do anything versus Evil Swarm, which was even worse. So, to me, it felt like two losses. So, I wasn't exactly in high spirits. Um, then, <clears throat> round three, I went against uh, a guy called Ben Smith. He had lost both his matches. And he was running Constellar. I don't know how he lost both of his matches, but still. Um, game 1 was pretty much a whitewash. The closest I got him down to was 6600, because he summoned a Sheraton in tap mode. Went to get the search, and I played Baylor. Made a Lee Joke, ran over it. But then he made Pleadies next turn. Bounced my Lee Joke, and just kept on bouncing anything I could make. You know, I wish I had a Phoenix Chain or something in game one, but I, it just didn't happen. Maybe I should have kept the Vader in hand. Thinking back, I probably would have done. 
let you let him get it the search, let him get his one for once, and when he makes Pallades next turn, you know, Vader that shit. Um Game two, I only got him down to seventy seven, so it wasn't really going good and once again, you know, Pallades won in the game. Um, bouncing all my shit, um, I did manage to get a pl his Pallides off the field by baiting out all its materials. But he went into Exiton Knight. Uh, as I said in my other video, he went, made Exiton Knight, played Lance under Light Mirror, blew up all my crap, and then started hitting me for damage. Obviously, he couldn't hit me for damage that turn because of Exiton Knight's effect, but I just didn't have anything to come back with because I think I had one card in hand and it wasn't exactly anything useful. So, yeah, by round three, I I thought, that's it, you know, I've flopped. I'm essentially on three losses, because I don't count the draw as anything. It was essentially a loss to me. Um, anything other than a win is a loss to me. Um, so, in my mind, I was, I was zero three, and that was really bad. I sort of, at this point, knew that I wasn't going to make uh, 16th place because although there was only invites for the first seven people, um, there was extra support given by the store. Um, Kanami obviously sent playmats and deck boxes and things like that. So top seven players got playmat, deck box and invite. And they went down even further, you got deck box, playmat. Then it was just a playmat. And then it started turning into booster prizes. And they had booster prizes all the way up to 16th place, in which you got two extra booster prizes. Now, you start off with three, which you collect at the end of the regional. Uh, for, that was for £10, which was a really good price. And so I was aiming to get at least 16th. I knew that I wouldn't come first, not running battling boxes. I would not come first. But if I could aim for that 16th mark, I could at least get two extra boosters. And essentially... Since that's the drop-off point for the price support, to me it feels like the top 16. Um, but unfortunately I, that wasn't the case, I came 32nd, which out of 49 people, it wasn't great. So, yeah, um, round 4 I played Archfiends against a local player. Um, she's not that great at Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, she knows how to play and stuff, but she's not a hardcore competitive player. That's what I mean by she's not great at the game. Um, she was running Archfiends. Now, Archfiends are a very interesting deck, and I'll probably want to build them at some point myself. If we get Archfiend Commander. Because that helps the deck all in all. Um, but basically, Falling Down is a bitch. It's a free mind control if you have an Archfiend card on the field. Even the field spell counts. So she took my lead joke and kept on smacking me with it. And she didn't even lose a single life point game one. Which was really embarrassing. And at this point I, my confidence was straight for the floor guys. It, it was unbelievable. I was like oh my god what am I doing. I'm going to lose every single game. But luckily in game two. Um, she did have the falling down. But I top decked into a twister. It saved my life. Because she had the Archfiend Field Spell, not Pandemonium, the other one, the more recent one. Uh, that gives all Archfiends an extra 800, uh, 500 or 800 attack points, which is really annoying. Um, so I topped at the Twister, which I suddenly I was like, oh, thank God. Because, you know, I sighed two Twisters and main deck three MSTs. And I was like, so essentially I'm running three, five MSTs in the deck. And I was thinking, where are they? I really need an MST to get me out of this bind. I topped it at the Twister, paid my 500, I went down from 58 to 53, paying that 500 and destroyed the falling down, uh, sorry, no, I destroyed the field spell, um, so that falling down didn't have another target to equip to, because when you destroy the field spell, falling down makes itself destruct and stuff, so I got my leecher back and smacked it with that, she really couldn't do anything. In game three, I shadow mirrored her. Uh, I had her on a shadow mirror all game right from the start, and I kept on hitting her with lead jokes, so enough said, really. 
<sighs> by which point I just got my first win and I was like, oh, thank God I've got a win. You know, maybe I do stand a chance, you know, if not a very slim chance of hitting the 16th mark. Um, but then I thought to myself, well, she's not known for being such a great competitive player. But I was going to take that win because it's the first win I'd had all day. Uh, round five, I had Light Swan, and I went against Lauren Burden. She's a, I believe she's an admin, uh, on the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG uh, UK and Europe training forum on Facebook. And she also, as I said in my video, was, uh, a, I think she was a judge at the YCS as well, but she was also doing the whole giant card thing, uh, which was really fun when I played it with uh, the guys going up to YCS London. She... Just nice to talk to, really friendly, you know, um, just uh, had some issues. Uh, so yeah, she was playing Light Spawn, and it was a bit one-sided, I will admit. Um, effect failures, maxis, and her drawing bad gave me game one. And then game two, it was a lot more grindy. She did get me down to 57, like in game one. Um, but I got her down to 14 before gaming her. So, um, Lauren, if you watch this, uh, hi. And uh, good game. You know, I won't mind dawning you again. Uh, I might, I may be travelling to another regional, guys. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet when I know. I'll let you know. Um, if you subscribe to me and you're going to that regional by all means, come up and say hi. Um, in between rounds, obviously, if I'm playing the game, please, I don't mean this in the harsh way, but don't bother me. If I'm in a game, don't talk to me, don't do anything, because I'm going to be focused so much on that game. Uh, so, yeah, um, that was a 2-0 win versus Lauren Burden, and that was pretty fun. And then game six, I was thinking, right, one more win, and I've, got, and I've gone 3-3. Three and three. Uh, sorry, I'll go three one two, and that would be a, a really nice score to end on, and it might give me the opportunity to go for sixteenth place. Uh, I went against uh, Darren Burden. I'm not sure if you're related to Lauren Burden, but whatever. Um, he was playing in sectors. Um, he'd already had his invite, which sort of annoys me a bit because you know. Why should people who have their invites be allowed to compete for an invite and take prize support away from people who don't have their invite yet? But, you know, Konami sucks. Um, he was playing in sectors. Uh, I got him down to 42. It was really horrible. I wasn't really getting great hands. That's my problem throughout the day. I was having really bad hands. I don't know what was happening. Um... He knocked me down to 31 before gaming me, and then game two, it was a bit of a landslide. I only did 800 damage to him, and he wiped me out. So it was a 2-0 win to him. Um, not a lot to say about it recent, really, but, you know, um, I did sort of catch him out on a ruling. Uh, he thought that he got set to Hornet's effect if I MST'd it. I double-checked the card and said, no, you don't, because it's only when you cap. Uh, you sent it to the graveyard and he said, what did you mean? He said, well, the card text says, when you send, you can send this card to the graveyard to do this, to do that. Which means that by MSTing it, it's not being sent to the graveyard by your own command or effect or whatever. So, yeah. So that's the recap. Um, I was getting bad hands all day. I uh, don't know what's happening. Um, I'd had really good test matches against uh, Dark and Cell 1989 um, and Skate Gate over Skype and uh, DN and things like that. But then again, we're all much more accustomed to each other's playstyle, so we sort of feel each other out rather than sort of making them big pushes that other players seem to make. So, you know, it was a fun day all in all. You know, I got to see all my mates, um, have a few laughs. Uh, some nice food in the Dexter Froglet Calf and Groovy Frog, where the event was being held in Ramsgate. Um, if you haven't seen the interview, go watch that after this video. Um, so yeah, it was a really nice time. I enjoyed myself. Um, I want to go to more regionals. Um, I actually have cards for sale, guys. Um, 
if you remember the Yu-Gi-Oh TCG train group on Facebook, uh, the UK and Europe one, the one I spoke about uh, Lauren Byrne being possibly an admin for, um, my pictures will be up there. I'll make a video on YouTube, but um, payment must be sent first. Uh, it'll be via PayPal. I don't take cash because that could be lost in the post and all sorts. Um, any orders over, say, I don't know, 20 quid will be sent out recorded delivery. So, you know, and that'll be free over 20 pound. Free record delivery. If it's under twenty pound, I will have to charge at least two pound for record delivery, dependent on the weight. So if you buy lots of cards from me, guys, and it still only comes under twenty pounds, I'm gonna have to get back to you on the prices for the weight, because the post office go by the weight, not by the size anymore. Um, so you know, I can't always predict what the postage could be. Usually, as a standard, it's two pound. But if it's lots and lots of cards, it could be more than that. So yeah, guys, that's all I've really got to say about uh, the WCQ. Uh, it was a nice, fun time. Uh, I wish I did better. Uh, congratulations to Skategoat User coming 19th. Um, congratulations to Darkness 1989, Luke, uh, for coming 23rd, I believe. I came 32nd, which wasn't really great, but I came higher than some other people who were local. Which, you know, it was always nice. At least I wasn't the only person in the local area not to do as well as they thought they would do. If that makes any sense. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm rambling. And this video's been going on now for about uh, just over 16 minutes. No, not too bad. Um, so, yeah. Um, join me next time for a deck profile. And then after that, I'll probably do a binder video. Um, yeah, catch you guys later. Nenex is sunny out. Peace.